Luke, do you know what we're starting this week with? What are we starting this week with, Corey? We're starting it with a wee email. A wee email. A wee email. That's right. Wow. So, um, this email is actually from the 18th of January. But the issue being... Oh, you've neglected an email. Well, I I had it saved in this episode. And I pushed this episode back from January. Back and back and back. (laughs) I see. To now. So, um... It's a little bit late, but, uh, you know, it's, right. it's okay. So uh, the subject line is, this is all about my boyfriend. <laughs> so it starts saying, hi, guys. A few months ago, my boyfriend... Oh, my God. What if they've broken up? <gasps> <laughs> oh, God. Part of me think it's, uh, thinks it's unlikely. It's not your responsibility, Corey. Yeah, yeah. I hope not. Um, a few months ago, my boyfriend, Matt, started listening to you. He's a science student at a university here in Australia. Oh. Wollongong. Wollongong? Oh, yeah, Wollongong. Wollongong. And his degree name is so long that I physically cannot remember it, but basically is rocks and maps and climate change. Cool, right? Pretty I think cool. so. I think so, Nat. So now we have a history of swapping and sharing podcasts, and he's been badgering me to listen to you guys ever since he started. But I refuse point blank and continued with my crime podcasts like the law student that I am. Oh, I love a good crime podcast. Yeah, I love a good crime podcast, I'm but not also gonna lie. You thank you for listening to this one. Thank right? you for also listening to us. Well, over Christmas he sat me down and made me listen to your episode about dreams and Boy, do I regret waiting so long to listen to you. I liked that one. Oh, oh yeah. That's, cute. that's nice. I now sit on the train to go see him after work, forcing myself not to laugh at your witty banter and finding <laughs> myself thoroughly enjoying the topics and what I'm learning. After an episode, I love bringing up the societal impacts with Matt and we really get into some good debates and discussions about the topics. It's really been great. Isn't that nice? That is quite nice. It's quite it? nice. That's lovely. Also for my birthday, he got a shout out for me on a podcast that I liked. Even though his birthday was on the 27th of December, I was wondering if you could do the same thing because I'd hate for him to hold this over me. Thanks, guys. I can't wait to hear more. Oh, happy birthday for the 27th of December. Happy birthday, Matt. For Happy belated happy birthday. birthday. Three birthday, Matt. months only. Almost four months ago. Almost four months late, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, ignore. tragic. Actually, by the time this comes out, it will be over four months late. So. Oh, no. <laughs> happy birthday, Matt. Happy In fact, birthday. Almost your half birthday, so happy birthday for that, too. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. So uh, that was from Nat. Uh, and yes, me and my boyfriend have names that rhyme, she says. Nat so, and Matt. Matt. So yeah, thanks for listening, oh, Nat and Matt. Nat um, and Matt. I hope you have a good time. Power couple, Nat and, and I, Matt. I hope you're still together. <laughs> be awkward if they weren't. <laughs> it would be, it'd Enjoy be... your shout out. I mean, I hope they're still listening, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> they, like, they didn't shout us out, so we're not listening anymore. <laughs> uh, so we start the show? Yes. Hello and welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jamp and Luke Cutford. This week, hey. we want to remind you about social distancing. You need to be sure that you are socially distant from everyone you know outside of your household. That means not hanging out in big groups that means not going to the park just to hang out just go to the shops and that's it and not going to each other's house to record, record a podcast yes yeah no you should definitely not you definitely be doing shouldn't that, do that. You should, luke you, chef, you definitely shouldn't do that yeah no look that that was a really I know, bad idea i should for not you. be here really should you really shouldn't, I be shouldn't be here, shouldn't be here. Yeah. can you go home actually which is why i'm not <gasps> what? Where are you what what Oh! <laughs> He's on a screen. For the people listening at home, I am in my bedroom and we're recording remotely. Um, Corey, through the entire intro, I was sitting here looking at my camera angle going, nah, it's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> so This week, we're talking about why primates are primates. Ah. <laughs> Very, Very good. good. Yeah, I'm quite proud of that one. Um, have you guys heard of friendly monkeys? Primates. Yeah, Prim- I've heard of primates. You've definitely heard of primates. We did. A, we actually did a yes. Patreon bonus episode about primates quite recently. We did, didn't we? Mm. Which you can listen to at patreoncom forward slash You can listen to if you're a part of slash guys. But you can listen to Patreon. Uh, what they said, <laughs> especially if you're a part of our tardigrades tier, which water is water bears tier, water bears, water bears. Yes, you technically got it right. Yeah, I, what about our tardigrades? Yeah, this is all true. Um, so, have you heard of the Trimates at all? Is that a YouTube channel? No, it's not. A, it's not a YouTube. Oh, I'm thinking like of the Trimates. No, you're thinking of the Sci Guys. Oh, yeah, the Sorry. Anyway, um, the Trimates are three incredible women who studied. Can you guess? Primates? English science and maths, or English 
Something like that. <laughs> I think it's primates. It's probably primates. I'm going to lock in primates. Oh, <laughs> is it not like... Okay, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, it makes more sense. I was trying to... Yeah, don't, just ignore me. This is why we don't invite him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> On, we're not actually social distancing. I've just been banished from the podcast. He's just not been invited this week, no. It's because he smells. He oh. smells so ooh, stinky. Yeah. Shut like up. a monkey. <laughs> Um, so, uh, the primates are three incredible women that studied primates. That is correct. So their names are Jane Goodall. Oh, um, I've, heard, I've, heard, I've of heard, her. heard of her. Yeah, we mentioned her on this podcast. You did mention her. That's where I've heard yeah. her from. Uh, some weeks ago, there's Diane Fossey. And I'm going to struggle with this one. Baruti Gald- Galdicas. Baruti Galdicas. Nice. So a little background. Um, the primates are also called Leaky's Angels. Uh, uh, Lewis Leaky. Um, so he was born, uh, in 1903 in Kenya, um, and he married uh, Mary Leakey, who was a uh, sort of paleontologist of sorts. Mm-hmm. Um, they basically And they opened a pub called the Leakey Cauldron. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Lewis Leakey was um, kind of a, uh, he was kind of a, what's the, an anthropologist of sorts. Um, and he also, um, basically, um, a team that he worked with uh, made unprecedented discoveries of hominids millions of years old that were linked to human evolution um and then he got quite um into this sort of whole primate study and he kind of set off these three different women on their journeys to becoming um three of the most preeminent uh scientists in their field ah it's like the part of powerpuff girls i you know i suppose <laughs> what when you break it down when to there's its, like the man that sends the three women off to do all the work i mean look when you break it down to its basest elements <laughs> I suppose you could say that it is somewhat like, similar to the Powerpuff Girls. Yes. So, yeah, these three women are basically set off on their path by um, Lewis Leakey. Uh, so, hence the name Leakey's Angels. Mm-hmm. Um, Trimates is obviously much better. It's a pun. Um, so, basically, what I'm going to be doing today is just taking you through all of the different um, alternate stories of these three women. And nice. kind of their studies and their lives. So, that is that. Also, I got this. I stole this from a patron. <laughs> they suggest it. They suggested it, and nice. it lost the Patreon vote, but I had to look into it, and I made an executive decision to Whoa. do it anyway. <laughs> Going against the Patreon wow. vote. No, 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 we still did the Patreon vote. Oh, we, did, we, did, we did the Patreon vote. Corey. <laughs> I am the emperor. I, ju- I held a referendum, <laughs> and I decided to completely ignore the both. result. <laughs> Unfortunately, you chose the <laughs> wrong one. <laughs> we can leave and remain. <laughs> 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 I mean, look, I'm not, it just seemed like such a great idea that I thought, you know, I really want to do this. So um, we've done the Patreon vote, but we've yeah. also gone ahead and done this because I quite like the idea. <laughs> so um, Jane Goodall, she was born on April 3rd uh, in 1934. Mm-hmm. Luke, do you know what that is in Luke years? That'll be uh, 60 BL. Mm-hmm. Good. That's all right. Good yeah. work. That's Thank quick you. Maths. Can you do it by day? No, I forgot. I forgot the first date you said. I, I forgot it already. It stayed in my head for about half a second. It was April third. Luke's time converter ah, so doesn't three, convert days. Three days yet. and sixty Might years. Oh, that's right. Luke's time converter doesn't do days. Doesn't do days. Mm. Ah, I think we need a fact the drawing okay. board. I reckon. Well, I think we need a patch so on next that thing one. To code. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, she was born in London, England, to, and I love these names completely. Irrelevant, but her parents have such amazing names that I'm going to say them anyway. Podcast. They're fantastic names. Fantastic names. Mortimer Herbert Goodall. A little Herbert there for you. Another Herbert. Yeah, another Herbert. There was yeah. a Herbert mentioned in our Patreon episode. Yeah, if you want to listen to that, you know Also to go. about primates. Yeah, yeah. Weird. I had a very laser focus with these ones. Yeah. Yeah. So um, her mother was called Margaret Mathanway Joseph. <gasps> I love the name Mathanway. It's Fantastic name, isn't it? Ever since I heard it in Little Britain. Little Britain, that's where it's that's from. It. I was going to say, do you love the name of family from the sketch in Little yes. Britain for any yes. other reason? <laughs> yes. Just that one. Yes, place. I, I love the, way the Matt name says it. Mortimer. Mortimer, Mortimer uh, is yeah, a good name, way. to be fair. I, like- I love the name of Mortimer because it's the tortoise in Animal Crossing. <laughs> 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 oh, I thought, oh, I love that name. Where do I love that name oh, from? Oh, oh yes, yeah. the tortoise and Animal Look, Crossing. you've been streaming Animal Crossing, haven't you? I have been streaming Animal Crossing during the quarantine. Yeah, it's been really fun. So, Goodall, back to Goodall. Um, from an early age, she was absolutely enamored by animal behavior. Um, so she would watch birds and animals in her leisure time, 
which makes sense because, um, as I said, she was born in 1934, so there probably wasn't very much to do back then. <laughs> so apparently from when she was young, uh, she wanted to travel to Africa to observe exotic animals in their natural habitats. Oh. Yeah, so uh, she went to the Uplands Private School. She got her school certificate in 1950 and then her higher certificate in 1952, which was actually about the highest level of education that she formally got. Oh. Which is incredible. Um, she went on to then um, find a job as a secretary at Oxford um, and then was wor- uh, working in a London-based documentary film company to kind of finance that trip to Africa. Oh, so, wow. She's done a lot, hasn't she? I mean, yeah, she was quite young at this point. This was the this was 1952-ish, oh, so blimey. she was about 18. Right, well. Yeah, so, um, so she was invited by a friend to visit uh, South Kinangop in Kenya. Um, in the late 1950s. So through other friends, she then met um, the famed anthropologist that we've been talking about, Louis Leakey, who was at that point the curator of the Corindon Museum in Nairobi. So he hired her as a secretary and then invited her to uh, be a part of an anthropological dig um, at this place called the uh, Olduvai Gorge, which is now apparently quite famous. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. I have not. I have not. Well, it's not that famous then, is it? No. So... Apparently, it's full of um, like fossils and remains of early ancestors of humans. Um, and then she was sent after that to study the vervet monkey, which uh, lives on an island in Lake Victoria. So Leakey's whole thing was that he really wanted to have a long-term study of primates. Because at this point, um, bear in mind that we didn't know as much about chimps and orangutans and gorillas as we know now. I mm. mean... We knew very little because ultimately all of the studies that were done either had two two large groups or mm. um, just they didn't stay long enough. Mm. So what Leakey wanted was basically someone to go in effectively by themselves and just study them for a long, long time. So Leakey basically wanted to do this because he thought that studying chimps would give him a good idea of the evolutionary history of humans. So that was kind of his um, reason for that. Um so he thought that Goodall, despite the fact that she had no formal education beyond high school, hmm. effectively, um, would be perfect for this. Uh, apparently she had the perfect sort of um, temperament and um, personality to be alone in the wild for a long time. Um, and he he brought this to her and she agreed to do it. Um, and a lot of people at the time, obviously, were thinking, why are you choosing her? This is like This is a bad hmm. idea because she isn't educated in a formal sense because she she wasn't a scientist really and she hadn't even gone to university yeah so people were a little bit like this seems sketchy but Mm -hmm. whatever um obviously they were proven incredibly wrong which just kind of goes to show you that having a university degree isn't everything judge a book by its degree (laughs) or lack of (laughs) lack there (laughs) lack thereof yeah i mean to be honest it's just I wish you could have these times now, because, I mean, we've we've told many a story of people who just kind of were in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Uh, like, for instance, the dolphin story that we once told. If you want to listen to that, you can actually listen to it on Patreon. You um, can. About basically a woman who was not a scientist at all and just really liked the dolphins and so was put in uh, put in charge of a study trying to make dolphins talk. This is this is stuff that wouldn't happen today. You need to be a scientist to do that just scratches any the kind of study. But, um... But back then, you obviously didn't. Oh have to. yeah, that's not all she did, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep this PG. In July of 1960, accompanied by her mother and an African cook, uh, Goodall went first uh, to observe the chimps. Mm-hmm. Um, it didn't go very well. Um, she couldn't get nearer than about 500 yards before the chimps just ran away from her. So obviously, they were like. Not having it. Absolutely they, not. Yeah, they thought she was a threat and were just like, Yeet. we're out of here. Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. She then tried to find another group of chimps um, that she could follow. And she got uh, kind of basically, she started a non-threatening pa- pattern of observation. Uh, so she got there at the same time every morning uh, near, a, near a feeding area. Um, and soon enough, the chimps were just fine with being around. with Well, fine with her being around. Yeah. Um, and within a year she managed to get within 30 feet of their feeding area. A year? A year. 
That was quite a long it's time. It's a very long time. And it's not to even spend. close. Yeah, these chimps were not very trustworthy. <laughs> to get 10 meters away from a monkey. <laughs> Just go to the zoo, Props man. To her for like, <laughs> still <laughs> trying. <laughs> it's dedication to keep with it for a year, though, and you're not like. <laughs> Mate, this is the start of it, honestly. It's still in the distance at that point. Mm, dear. To this day, she's not been within <laughs> she's at, 10 she's feet of She's at 29 feet now. <laughs> well, actually, uh, thanks to this whole pandemic, she's got, got to, to remain uh, two metres away. So. <laughs> so she just is it. I don't know if she just got close enough, and then Boris was like, no. <laughs> I mean, that's that's set her back a few years yeah, already. No, no, no. <laughs> Social distancing. Yeah, so after two years of seeing her every day, they showed no fear, and then um, came up to her to look for bananas. So, you know, it, it took her two years, but... Blimey. Finally, they were kind of good with them being with her being. Did she close. have bananas? Um, well, actually, this is what happened. I'll tell you that in a little bit. She did actually have Ooh. bananas at one point. So she discovered a lot about chimp behavior. Um, so she was basically um accepted into their um. They like bananas. <laughs> Don't stereotype them. <laughs> two years. Mm. She, two years. She tried so many <laughs> rocks, just cars. What? What do chimps like? Turns out bananas. <laughs> <figure it> out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Imagine if she spent like two years trying to get close to them and then one day she took a banana to work for lunch <laughs> and all the chimps were like, hello. hello. <laughs> what took have her two you years, got? Two years to eat a banana. <laughs> get your one every two years. <laughs> five a day who? So that's a, it's a five a decade, right? Five. Yeah. 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 The math checks out on that one. Wow. It actually does. It does, doesn't it? So she discovered a lot about chimps. Not only did they like bananas, but also she started a banana club. Um, Outstanding discovery. <laughs> did you know that chimps like bananas? Like a joke. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a dreadful I've joke. I've come to the conclusion yeah. that chimps like bananas. Ah, I will now start a banana club. <laughs> Look, someone had to discover that chimps like bananas. <laughs> this is true. Was it her? Did she actually discover that chimps like bananas? I don't think so. I think she just. No. Okay. I think she just started using bananas. Although she did discover yeah. some things about what chimps eat, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So basically she um every day she would like kind of um give them bananas to um get solid them, move. Solid move. Yeah, to get them closer to her. So <laughs> <laughs> I I would to be fair, I wouldn't need a university degree to work out that would work. So <laughs> I think it, on the first it, day you'd be like, How about we try to give them a banana? This is very simplified, obviously. So she used um a systematic um sort of um feeding method to gain their trust um so basically she just wanted to be able to get into their circle and just observe them just watch and see what they were up to yeah yeah so she got quite closely um she got quite close to a lot of them um she started imitating them and would spend time in the trees with them and would eat their food basically she moved in and she was a freeloader hold on she climbed the trees with them yeah (laughs) okay She's very, she's very lithe. She looks very limber. Okay. Yeah, get a picture up. You'll, you'll see. I believe you. No, Jen, have a look. Honestly, while I'm, while I'm reading this next bit, have a look. Jane Goodall. Jane Goodall climbing a tree. I've, I've also googled Jane Goodall in a tree, and I can confirm <laughs> oh my God, I she is one. in a tree. Wow. She's actually in a tree. Look at her. Yeah. In that she tree. She looks very limber. Look at her go. Well, she's very much a climber. She's got a climber's build. Oh my gosh. So I've been telling about how uh, Jane Goodall wasn't, you know, formally educated, uh, and I've had I haven't said it yet, but she's actually Doctor Jane Goodall. Ah, oh. yeah. So she was awarded. So she was. Yes, yeah, she was. Well, no, she was awarded a PhD um, from Cambridge University in 1965 um, because, well, basically from all the work of all this done. research. Um, oh wow! And so she went to pursue the PhD, and they obviously let her do it, but she was the eighth person in the university's history who got a PhD without first earning a baccalaureate degree. Wow. Wow. I didn't know you could actually do that. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you can if you're Jane Goodall. You can, yeah. That's, uh, that's or the exception. Or seven other people. So yeah, so she got that in 1965. Um, and then she had a visiting professorship um, at Stanford University from 1970 to 1975. Um, and then she was uh, given her position as the Honorary Visiting Professor of Zoology at the University of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. That's pretty cool. That was a very long sentence. I had to take a really a deep sentence. breath after that. So, um, basically, after this 1986 conference in uh, Chicago that focused on the ethical treatment of chimpanzees, she completely changed her kind of um, direction almost um, towards educating the public um, about kind of 
how endangered the animals were and more sort of conversa- conversation, conservation and protection um, kind of viewpoint rather than the actual study. Um, she wasn't too happy with how science treats animals, much like Luke, I suppose. Yeah, it's very similar to Luke. Mm. Yeah. I do I do sometimes express that view. Yeah, you do sometimes. And sometimes I've known Luke to go and live with uh live with apes for a while. That's a very I Luke lived thing with to elephants do. for a while. I did that. I lived oh, with you elephants did do that. for a while. What is yeah. your life? I didn't live with apes. Yeah. I I apparently breastfed an ape, but I uh that's for the Patreon people only. <laughs> <laughs> that was the episode. I did not listen to him an ape, breastfeed by an the way. ape. Listen I to not, yes. in a cunning it's experiment. It's a long recording exclusively of me breastfeeding an ape. <laughs> Available now on patreon.com slash guys. <laughs> Listen to the March bonus episode and this will all make sense. <laughs> no, it's don't. Safe. We it's don't. safely promise. <laughs> um, so uh, she encourages African nations to have nature-friendly tourism programs, um, uh, which actually makes wildlife really um, profitable for African nations, which is incredible. Um, so she went from not just studying them and living with them to um, now basically protecting them and being kind of, Aww. um yeah, the kind of chimpanzee's That's good. Uh, face for the humans, you know? Oh, guardian angel. That's so true. That's it. Yeah, I first heard about her um, through a Simpsons episode, wherein, of course you well, did. Yes, of course I did. Uh, wherein <laughs> they parodied they parodied her <laughs> completely. It was an episode called Simpsons Safari. Turns out she was uh, not very good, and she was using the apes. She was using the chimps as a oh to manufacture drugs. I think. Sorry, what? Oh, this in, wasn't in the how Simpsons did you do that? episode. Oh, in the Simpsons episode, this didn't oh. happen in real life. No. Oh, okay. Of course not. I would <laughs> wow, not be doing a plot a st- twist. Oh actually, my gosh! Do you think it have gone this long without without dropping that without bomb? mentioning that? <laughs> I don't know. No, she never used chimps for any forced labor at all. That's good, as far as I'm aware. You know, I mean, I don't ever. Yeah, that's a good standard to have. It is, you know, it's a pretty high standard. Yeah. No forced labor, no breastfeeding. Those are the things. Those are two rules for chimps. (laughs) (laughs) So that is the story of Jane Goodall. Yeah. She went to study chimps. She sounds nice. She's actually lovely. Honestly, I would love to do a full, complete episode on her just to talk about everything that she's done because she is absolutely incredible. Yeah. And that's not to diminish the work of Diane Fossey, who we'll be talking about next. There's two more to go. There are two more to go. In the trimates. In the trimates. Well, there are three of them. I don't there know where three. that comes from, but uh, there are three. So Diane Fossey is a zoologist best known uh, for researching uh, gorillas in the Rwandan mountain forest from the 1960s to the 1980s. And there's also a little bit of a mystery Ooh. at the end of this one. So keep your ears open, see Ooh. if you can figure it out. <laughs> so she was um, an occupational therapist to begin with. Um and then she got interested in primates during a trip to Africa in 1963. Uh, so she started studying endangered gorillas um, for uh, 20 years um, from that point on. Um, basically, uh, she was born in 1932 in San Francisco, um, grew up with her mom and dad, uh, and then tried to love animals um, when she was younger, much the same as Jane Goodall. And then she graduated from San Jose in 1954 and um, nice. was working as a hospital intern and then was, um, you know, working as an occupational therapist, as I said. Um, and she was living on a farm at that point. Um, and she was working with the livestock on, on her off hours. Uh, but she wasn't quite happy right. with that. Um, and I was she, say, it sounds very different to what she ends up doing. Uh, it's very different to what she ends up doing, yeah. So she really ended, uh, she ended up um, wanting to study in Africa. So, as I said, in 1963, she went to Africa, spent her entire life savings and a bank loan to visit Kenya, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, and the Congo, uh, along with some other places. Um, and at that point, she met paleoanthropologist Mary Leakey and her husband, ah, Louis Leakey. Ah, there we go. This feels like the Avengers, but for uh, <laughs> women studying primates. It does. And you Leakey's know? like Nick Fury. Yeah, he's like a white uh, African Nick Fury. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, um... They were basically one of the best husband and wife teams that w- were known. Like, they were like the Curies, but for sort of paleontology and anthropology. Yeah. Um. So, back in Kentucky, she caught up with, Le- uh, with Leakey uh, at a lecture in 1966. Um, and then he invited her to take, a, like, a long-term study of the gorillas in Rwanda. Uh, which, as we know, she did. 
Um, so she went and lived in the mountain um, in the Democratic Republic of Congo until a civil war broke out and she had to escape to Rwanda. Um, and then in 1967, she... Uh, kind of set up this research center, a uh, research foundation uh, called the Karisoke Research Foundation um, in Rwanda's Volcanoes National Park. Basically, so she could study these gorillas more. Um, and she was swapping her time between um, field work and trying to get a PhD um, with Cambridge University. And she got her degree in 1976 and then had a professorship at Cornell University. So she actually, this is quite an interesting one. You might have heard of this before. Have you ever heard of uh, Gorillas in the Mist? No. <laughs> what? Neither of you have heard of Gorillas in the Mist. No. That sounds the like film. a parody poem. The fi- You've never heard of Gorillas? It sounds like an album. The film. <laughs> the book, even... When did it come out? Well, you have Google. Right, um, okay, it was we... it, it was in 1988. Right, gorillas so in the Mist. Ten years before I was born. Yeah, but like you've seen films from ten years before you were born. Yeah, but not weird. No, because nothing existed before I was born, Corey. <sighs> you know what, Luke? <laughs> <laughs> gorillas that series, in the Gorillas the in the Mist sounds like a really bad it's poem. Like a bad Tarzan. It sounds like someone looking out over a misty moor. What is that shape that I see yonder? And then out of that mist, there came a gorilla. Right. Is it with Sigourney Weaver? Yes. <laughs> There's a fun fact about this. Sigourney Weaver and I have the same birthday. Really? Not the same year. Same oh, day. Okay, not the same. She's year. She's a little bit older than me. So she was basically the world's leading um, authority. Well, Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't know what I'm about to say. It could be on being a bomb-ass actor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you about to say something about gorillas in Mist? So she was, the, she was the world's leading authority on the physiology and behavior behavior of mountain gorillas. So no, not Sigourney Weaver. It was actually... Wait, but were the mountains misty? Yes, Luke. They were so she was the leading the world's leading expert on gorillas coming out of mist. This isn't Sigourney Weaver I'm talking about. <laughs> no, I know it's not Sigourney Weaver. You're talking about the other person, the science person. Yeah, so whose gorillas. Name I've forgotten. So... <laughs> God, I'm not looking forward to the quiz at the end of this episode. Yeah, you're... I've retained none of this information. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna to have to change the questions now because I feel like they were too hard. Um, it's Diane Fossey. Um, Gorillas in the okay. Mist w- was the name of a book that she wrote, and it was made into a film with Sigourney Weaver in it. Oh, was it about the yeah. gorillas on the okay, mountain? Okay, that makes sense. Well, what do you think? <laughs> well, I don't know. Is it? Yeah, it's yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Cool. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> I mean, she spent her whole life watching gorillas in a mountain. What? She's a not gonna go write mountain, a book you about. Might say. Yeah, but she's not going to go write a whole book called Gorillas in the Mist that's about something completely different, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. So um, she basically went down the same route that Jane Goodall went down, and she started trying to protect the gorillas more. Uh, she specifically said that she were... That she were? She specifically said that they were gentle giants um, and needed to, be, needed to be protected from environmental and human hazards. Um, and effectively, she was she was a conservationist. Um she wanted to protect them from uh, poachers, zoo wardens, um, like a, a bunch of other kind of people that were out to kind of catch them and or kill them. Um, and she fought She fought for gorillas uh, right up until her death um, on oh. December 26th, 1985, where she was found um, dead, uh, killed presumably by poachers. But this oh. is the mystery <gasps> in that we don't know who did it. No one was ever found. Oh. Yeah, the murderer was never found. Wow. Yeah, so it's a really tragic story. Oh, that's a sad end. It is a sad end. It is. Um, But today, her work continues through the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund International, um, which uh, the Karasoke Research Center, uh, Foundation, which is one that she set up, uh, still operates under. Um, So the original facility was destroyed. Um, It was in Rwanda. Uh, it was destroyed during the Rwandan Civil War. <laughs> um. Its headquarters is now in Musanze, but they've just brought in their first Rwandan uh, director, which is really nice. Oh, nice. So, you know, a little bit sad, but... um, There's a positive little... But there's a little upturn at the end. Yeah, yeah. There's a little upturn at the end. So why don't we move on to our good friend, Baruti Galdakas? Let's move on to Baruti. Yes, please. So when was Baruti born? Do you guys remember? Um, 1935. That was Jane Goodall. 
Uh, she was born yeah, in 1934. 1944. Oh, I was going to say 42. Ah, uh, one year. No, no, no. As in Jane Goodall was born in 1934. Sorry. Uh, oh. Baruti one person. 1942. No. Um, 19. Wait. Did I say that? When did I say Jane Goodall was born? 1934. That's correct. 1934. Baruti was born in 1946. Ah, oh, it was 40. Ah. Now, tell me, where do you think the worst place to be born in 1946 would be? Um, Germany? Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, that was going to be my Hell first Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she was born in Germany, um, but she's actually Lithuanian and Canadian because her parents oh. are Lithuanian, and she was born in Germany while they were on their way to Canada. Oh, yeah. So she she didn't grow up in Germany. She actually grew up in uh, Canada to Lithuanian parents, which is why her name is still Lithuanian. So I've read the story wherein she checked out her first library book, uh, and it was Curious George, and I'm sure you can tell where this story is going. Yeah. So apparently, uh, reading this book inspired her. Um, to research monkeys? Yeah, to become an explorer. Oh, okay. Like, you know, in Curious George. And then she yeah. also obviously went on Man to research primates. Yeah. Um, so they then moved from Canada to the United States in 1964. Um, and she started studying at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. Sorry, she'd finished studying by that point at oh. the uh, University of British Columbia in Vancouver. Wow, she started and finished at the same time? Well, she knocked woman. it out in a weekend. She could have done. <laughs> you don't know. I'm the one with all the information. So, <laughs> yes. Yes, she did. <laughs> no, no. I no, don't so she, believe you. <laughs> well, find out for yourself. But you can't, so you have to believe me. I can't because I tried to Google her and I couldn't spell her name. <laughs> <laughs> actual thing that just happened <laughs> google try mate number three. Oh uh, yeah okay fine if you, if you google that she will come up um so she continued her studies um at the university of california los angeles uh, more commonly known as ucla and uh, then she got her bachelor's degree which was in psychology and zoology in 1966 and then a master's degree in anthropology in 1969 um and then she was a graduate student at that point, and she met, um, can you guess who? Our favorite uh, Kenyan oh, anthropologist. Leaky, 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 Mr. Leakey. Mr. Leakey. Tim Leakey. Tim Leakey. Who Brian Leakey. Brian Leakey. Uh, it Lord, is an LL. Tortum, Lloyd Tortus Leakey. Leakey. Lloyd Leakey. L L Mortimer Leakey. Lewis Leakey. Uh, Lewis Leakey. Lewis Leakey. And his, That's what I said, yeah. man. Listen. Yeah. Listen, open your ears. <laughs> <laughs> so she uh, ran into Lewis Leakey. Um, and he asked her to join the Avengers Initiative, and of course she accepted. He has a habit Lovely. of <laughs> running into women who, and then inviting them to go on expeditions. Yeah, well, the thing is, that strange. It seems he often strange a, superpower. It seems he often asked them to be his secretary first. Oh, it's like be a secretary, right. and then like a few months later, he's like, "Now go and study now, go primates." <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you've done enough answering phones and office jobs. Now go and lift these giant the killing machines. I'm just imagining the receptionist at my primary school, <laughs> Mrs. Atkinson, suddenly leaving to go and study primates. It would oh, be the God. strangest career move. I mean, to be fair, I think she got the best of the bunch. I mean, Jane Goodall got chimpanzees, which, as we know from our Patreon bonus episode, can be kind of dangerous. Mm. Um, Diane got um, gorillas, which are massive. And could tear you apart. Uh, whereas, what did she? Get? Can we? Yes. We whereas guess? Baruti. Oh, yeah, do you want to guess? Do you want to guess what she got? Do you want to take a guess? Uh, monkeys. N no, that's really broad. That's very broad. Uh, uh, gorillas. No, you've already said that one. No, we've uh, had not gorillas. Chimps. You've already said that. Uh, uh, lemurs. <laughs> no, they're not primates. <laughs> um, what else is there? Orangutans. Uh, people. She got D people. Yes, orangutans. Got <laughs> People, people, <laughs> go to the mountains and study people. people. <laughs> you have to live in isolation. They won't let you near them. Turns out there was just people a pandemic. The That's why they can't <laughs> My new book. <laughs> <laughs> Monkeys are people uh, too. Okay. Oh wait, no, they're just people. Orangutans. Um, okay. So, um, yeah. So, uh, Doctor Galdacas went on to study orangutans, and obviously, Doctor Leaky. Uh, funded this whole thing as he did with the previous two trimates. So where did Doctor Leakey get all his money? Uh, he started a foundation. He, was just, you know, he made a lot of money. So where he had did he get the money for from hiring so many what? secretaries <laughs> to do things for him? 
This is suspicious. I don't think you understand how making money worked. How did he make money? <laughs> had to pull, he they really had to pull their weight. <laughs> he hired a bunch of people. I will. Uh, and paid them money. <laughs> And then he asked them to loan it back. Yes. Yeah. No. Um, How I did he earn so much money? I think he had a number. I think he had a foundation. Um, and uh, so basically, we'd get funds from the foundation. Right. Yeah. Also, mm, his wife ran suspicious. the leaky cauldron, which brought in a bit as well. Ah, yes. Many, many galleons. <laughs> we all know that the leaky cauldron is run by a man. <laughs> by Tom. Yes, he's called Tom. Yeah, Tom the barman. Yes. Yeah. You don't know he doesn't have a wife, Cory. <laughs> Or maybe a lover called Mr. Leakey. Lewis Leakey. Maybe the lover of it. Tom the barman. <laughs> you never see him in the books, but you don't know, you don't know that he's not there. Uh, that's, that's, that, that's exactly what J.K. Rowling's going to come out. Tom the barman was actually gay and the whole time and in love with, <laughs> with Lewis, Lewis Leakey, Leakey. The famed anthropologist. The funded it just wasn't relevant to the story, so I never mentioned it. For untrained women. <laughs> so uh, Dr. Galdacas is lectured... Um, loads on orangutans and you know their rainforest habitat um basically to loads of places in indonesia and also throughout the world because she went to borneo to study them Ooh. yeah borneo it's a lovely sounding place isn't it sounds lovely it does sound lovely and the loveliest thing is you can meet orangutans there which that does is sound lovely the great part about them is that no matter how old they are or what gender they are they all look like old men every this single one of them <laughs> They all look like Danny DeVito a bit. They do look like Danny DeVito. Yeah. And that's not an insult. I, I love Danny DeVito and I oh, love how really? he looks. He's adorable. But orangutans do look like uh, him. Yeah. I'm not sure Danny DeVito would take it as not an insult if you told him he looked like every orangutan. <laughs> no, 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 no. He doesn't, he doesn't look like them. They no, look no, like they him. Look like oh, him. they look like him. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I, I, clear difference. I think it might go both ways, to be fair, but. <laughs> Choose another human person. That orangutans look more like. <laughs> I'm. I'm not. I didn't get myself in this hole. You got yourself in this hole. I'm not in a hole. I'm perfectly happy. I'm standing on the flat ground with no spade in sight. <laughs> Just to be I, clear, I Luke, on... Luke's not said he, they don't look like Danny DeVito. <laughs> I don't, I'm not. Yes, I'm not saying. I'm just saying I wouldn't necessarily have said it out loud. <laughs> oh, yes. thank God I'm not being recorded. <laughs> so after 40 years in Tanjung Puting, um, which is now a national park. Um, Galdacas had basically conducted the longest um, study, longest continuous study, um, by one person of any wild mammal in the world. Ooh. So just to reiterate that, um, she did for 40 years one study on orangutans with her as the lead. 40 in- years. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a lot. spent 30 of those getting about five meters away from them, to be fair. Actually, orangutans are much more social. <laughs> they seem really chill, don't yeah. they? <laughs> they do I mean, seem they to... see what evidence? What evidence do you have to back up that opinion, James? I they look, they're, they're like the stoners of the <laughs> monkey, gorilla, chimpanzee world. No, I've watched orangutan videos. I'll tell you what: some of them are really, really mean. I saw one that really? was bullying some babies, trying to steal their trying, trying oh, to steal no. their coconuts. Some stoners are really mean, to be fair. That's true. Well, Why the thing do is that... babies have their own coconuts? Because they're orangutans. What else? They... Pardon. Oh, sorry, you mean some baby orangutans, not some baby humans who happen <laughs> to be I... owned, who owned coconuts. Why would it be talking about baby humans? Why would an orangutan be stealing from human human babies? Because it wants their coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was an it was an orangutan that didn't know didn't wasn't very good at opening coconuts. So it would just right. steal open coconuts from other uh, younger from babies oh, who were good yeah. at opening coconuts. Imagine being so bad at something that babies are better at it than you, and you steal the product yeah, of their steal skill. It. Like taking like candy, candy from, from a baby. baby. <laughs> <laughs> Although he had to that's be like taking diet. candy from a baby because you can't take the wrapper off of your own candy. <laughs> oh no, I can't get it out. <laughs> just gotta wait for him to open it. There this, we go. This baby just effortlessly goes. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, much like Jane Goodall, uh, Galdacas was the first to document um, a lot of things about orangutans. Um, for instance, um, she first kind of spotted the long interval between um, birth, which was which is about 7.7 years. Mm. So, that that's, I mean, that's wild. Think about that. Humans can have... It's longer than us. Yeah, that's true. Humans can have it a kid, like, basically us. straight away. Yeah. You know? We can pop them out. Ah. Compared to orangutans. But, uh, no, 7.7 uh, 7 years. Um... She recorded over 400 types of food that they ate. 
Which is wild, because how do you find 400 types of food in a rainforest? I definitely don't eat 400 types of food. And I have access to a shop. Well, not anymore. I I think I still have access to the shop, Cory. Mm, check your doors, Luke. I hope so. I've, oh, I've no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you glued them shut. <laughs> she did a lot of work for the conservation of orangutans, uh, to the point that, um, basically, she was given, uh, in June 1997, one of the highest awards that Indonesia can give to someone. Um, the Dang- orangutans point, can award. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, the Kalpataru Award. That's a very difficult word to say. The Kalpataru Award, um, which is a, basically the highest honour given by Indonesia um, for outstanding environmental leadership. Um, and she's the only non-Indonesian to ever win that award and was also wow. one of the first wow. women to be um, given it by the Indonesian government. Oh, wow. Which is only. But that's the story of the trimates. Yay. But just to give you a little stinger, see what happened afterwards. Oh, no. So... This is good. Oh, it's good. Okay. Yeah, it's good. So uh, Dr. Lewis uh, Leakey was, as I said, one of the 20th century's greatest anthropologists. And he... And also the boyfriend of Tom the Barman from the Leakey Cauldron. <laughs> How could I forget also the, the boyfriend His of Tom the Barman? other great achievement, Sources Corey. Description. Come on. That's true. Wooing um, Tom the Barman. <laughs> Basically, he was traveling to the United States in the 1960s to lecture and raise money for his research, and he met some like some very enthusiastic people who were very interested in what he was studying. Um, and they were so inspired by him and his ideas that they actually created the Leakey Foundation to support Lewis and Mary Leakey's fieldwork. Mm. And then also the groundbreaking research of the Trimates. Jane Goodall. Wow. Diane Fawcett. That's where he got Baruti, his money from. Galdicast. Yes. <laughs> I didn't want to spoil it, Luke, but uh, uh I did. yeah, you did. That was the thing, didn't I, you? I like doing. You that. You do like doing yeah. that. You've got, you've got a knack like for it. Poking your nose in, don't you? But I'm afraid <laughs> that is the show, you guys, for this week. That was a nice story. It was a nice story. Uh, but it's I'll like a- three mini stories in one. It was three mini stories in one. It was, a, it was a, it was a three for one, wasn't it? Yeah. It's like that bedtime story on CBBS where they read you a bedtime, a few bedtime stories, and then you fall asleep. It's like a triptych, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is <laughs> like the story that. makers. Oh, the story makers. The story oh, that makers. was great. Yeah. yeah. One question, though. Okay. Yes. Dun, dun, Are you dun. ready for a quick fire <gasps> quiz? Yes. Question number one. What year was Dr. Jane Goodall <gasps> born? 1934. Ding, ding, ding. You yes. got it right. Congratulazoni. Which means we move on to Luke, who loses a point for saying congratulazoni <laughs> once more. But Luke, for two points, where yes. did Dr. Jane Goodall get her PhD from? The University of uh, uh, UCLA. Luke, I am afraid no, that is University incorrect. Of you do as in Toronto. No. Dun, dun, dun. no. You're wrong. Ah. She was okay. born in London and got her PhD yeah. from Cambridge University. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Sad. Someone was at UCLA. I remember that. I'm sure someone was at UCLA. Uh, Otherwise, it wouldn't be much point. Was. <laughs> <laughs> Champ, question number two for yes. you. Who is the wife of Lewis Leakey? Uh, Tom the Barman. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know what? Ten Dumbledore. points. Ten I'm points. not going to give it to you. <laughs> oh, no. this, is, this is the equivalent of Dumbledore giving ten points to Neville Longbottom for <laughs> doing nothing. <laughs> for dobbing them in. Sometimes it's important to stand up to your friends, Corey. For example, when they deny the relationship between Lewis Leakey and Tom the Barber. <laughs> <laughs> ten points to Gryffindor. You've had plenty to of time and to think. James. I might have remembered that if we hadn't gone on the Tom the Barber. Yeah. I'm going to have to take an answer. Um, Tomet. The bar lady. Uh, that is incorrect, <laughs> I'm afraid. So, as it currently stands, you have one point, yes. and Luke has minus one. Question yep. number two yep. for you, Luke. What kind of primate <laughs> yes. did Diane Fossey study? Uh, so, she was the second one. So, she studied. Um, ah, she studied. Oh, okay. First one studied. Chimps. Second one. So, gor- uh, uh, goril- gorillas? Ding, ding, ding. That's you got it, it right. Yeah. Well done. 
Okay. Ah. Jamp. Last question, Last question for you. Which country did Diane Fossey first start up <gasps> her foundation? <gasps> uh, I want to say Africa. I don't know. Which country? Which country? Oh, yeah, no, that's a continent. Uh, <laughs> um... um well, this is embarrassing. Hold on, don't 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 mind me. Don't. I'm just gonna, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, America, USA. Uh, I'm afraid that is incorrect. So as it stands, Luke is on zero points. <laughs> What's Jeff? the correct answer to that? Oh, it was Ru- Rwanda. Ru- Ru- I can't uh, say it out loud. Of course. Okay, well, as it stands, Jamp, you're on one point. Luke, you're on zero points. But because I took a point off Luke before. <laughs> I'm going to give him two points. <gasps> if he gets this right. Ah! Evil. Wow. So Luke. Well, James, you thought Africa was a country. I, uh, <laughs> I did not I think, think I Africa was two a country. Points. <laughs> Look, question number three yes. for you. Yes. When is Sigourney Weaver's birthday? <laughs> oh. Can I ask Siri? <laughs> Can I ask Siri? No, you no. can't ask Siri. <laughs> I, what do you mean? Was that something we said? No, it wasn't. What? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. I told you, Sigourney what? Weaver and I have the exact same oh. birthday. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> um, the 20th. What a bad friend. Well, what's your birthday? 26th? What I think? a sad little life. <laughs> <laughs> this is embarrassing for you, Luke. 20. When? What? I don't have a clue. Well, I'm yours sorry. is April 6th. 20, 20, yeah, but yeah, okay. 26th, <laughs> 26th of February? Oh, my. It didn't even get the month. Look, it's the opposite end of the year. I'm afraid it's the 8th of October. Yeah. Oh, which means, Jam, you win our quick fire quiz round. And look, I'm afraid you are no longer on the podcast. Goodbye. <laughs> Which leaves, Jamp, just you and me to read out our lovely patrons for this oh, month. yes. So we're starting off by thanking our very first patron on the list. I don't know if it's our first patron ever, but this patron is Alice Becker Loyalian. Alice Blecker Loyalian. Got that right. I got that well one right. Done. Yeah. Off the top of my head. Thank you to Thank Anne. Thank you to Anne. Oh, oh, we said that at the same time. That's my oh. mother, Anne. Yeah. Yeah. Anne <laughs> to Brie Yon Ah. Thank you to Daisy Beerflat. Thank you to Ella Hellesy. Thank you, Ellie Grant. Thank you to George Farron. Oh, hello, George Farron. Thank you very much. Thank you to Hiccup. Thank you, Isabella. Thank you, Landy Manderson. Oh, thank you, Landy Man. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Luke Cuffworth. <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> thank you, Miss Sandin. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Natalia. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you to Omar Garcia. Thank you to Paul Olson. Thank you, Phoenix Wilkes. Thank you to Quinn Hall. Thank you to Rebecca Egan. And thank you, Tobias Schaffel. Ooh, we got a lot of patrons now. We do have a lot of patrons now. Over 20 Thank of you them. to you all. Thank you all very much. And if you want to join that cool little crowd and get bonus episodes every month and also some extra little bits... For some adding some more soon. Little bonus episodes. Head over to patreon.com forward slash sci guys and join in the fun. Thank you all for watching. We can find the references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday. And why not leave a nice wee comment? You can find and contact us at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Or leave us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. But you can find me at NotCory everywhere. Find me at Jamkin everywhere. Find me at Luke Cupforth everywhere. Well, actually, not Goodbye. everywhere. We're all going to be inside our houses for the foreseeable future. Goodbye. Goodbye.